So on one of my previous videos, a lot of people were wondering what that game was Hal Jumper was referencing where he played against First UK. Here we go, we have it. So we've got Hal Jumper playing as 5 Easy, as always, and he's up against Ranborn playing as First Armoured. Ranborn used to play the game a lot back when it first came out. I remember playing against him quite a bit. Uh, it doesn't well, I mean, I guess he's back after after taking a break. But so uh, yeah, these are two very good players. I'll jump a rank five, and uh, Ranbon used to be better than me. Um, I'm not sure what his rank is now. So let's start with the deployments, and then we'll get on with the game. So starting with how jumpers deployment, all he plays is five E. He's got about 900 games on five E. I'm not joking. So he knows what he's doing here. So he's got an AMX 10RC going down to this road, and that's so he can shoot people coming down there. Uh, the AMX 10RC, for those of you who don't know, is a wheeled tank. You can see burning wrecks of it all over Ukraine, but in this game it's actually good, unlike real life. So yeah, 16 pen and 105mm gun. Mediocre stealth, very good optics, great speeds, advanced recon deployment, three front armor, amphibious, etc. So... It's one of the best units in the game, and it's still very cheap at 100 points. So yeah, he's got one of those going down to there. And we're going left to right. So he's got one Minstrel in the Vab T2013. And uh, make no mistake, this is not tracked. This is wheeled as well. <laughs> and that's going over to there. And he's got a CV for Charlie. And he's got two Commandos, and they're going to secure this point over here. Moving over to the right, he's got Dragon Paras going to here. And then three AMX 10RCs going to here. Behind that, he's got two Grenadier Volta Gears in Vabs. And there are two that... Are they the Apples ones? No, they're not. So they get the LRAC, which is 850 meter rocket launcher. So they are going to the town here and here, and then he's got a group anti-char that gets two Apples, and it's like 55 points or something. It's pretty stupid. And he's going into here with a Sapper's Flam, presumably. Yeah, and then two more Minstrels in the Vab T20s, and then a Vab PC going to here. Moving over to his opponent's deployment. Uh, Ramborn, he's got... He's playing first UK, which is really second worst armoured division in the game. Uh, only fifth Panzer is worse, really. It's a solid B tier division. It's just there's so many overperforming divs like 5e that you don't see first armoured because anything it can do... A different div like 39Y, for example, can just do everything it does but better. So he's got a scimitar going to here, scimitar going to here, Rover Milan Para going around to here, two more scimitars going to here, and you see he's taken this road, probably because he knows that there's going to be somebody here, although actually we'll still get shot. Uh, CV for Delta, and then he's leaving it outside the zone. Not sure why people do that. I know Lathans does that, and I guess he's just copying him, but I don't know why they do that. Because um, obviously, you might say, well, it makes it harder to find. Well, no, it doesn't, because if I'm looking for a CV over here, the fact that you've taken it one centimetre outside the zone isn't going to save you. <laughs> and all it means is that somebody can cap this zone. So I, I don't understand it personally. So he's got two Javelin Lamaus going to the town. He's chosen not to take the church, even though that would give you extra sight lines because religious people can see further than atheists. He's got Law 80 going to here. Stop any rushes down there. Already spoke about that Rogue Mampara. Got Tank CV going to Bravo. And then, yeah, snipe, uh, Sniper's going to the church. Okay. And then a Rogue Mampara. And that, Scout's Laureate going to here, they'll be going up against those commandos, and a fox going around to here. So, oh yeah, and he's bought a Tornado F3 at the start. So that does it for the deployment, and uh, let's cast the game. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I guess I'll cast it from this perspective, because England. Right, so they're off, and everybody's going to where we said they were going to go. This tornado is going to take a, just a loop around the map, spot any enemies. Uh, Helljumper opening without Rollins. And then Rambon, he's also got a Jaguar rocket at the start too. So presumably he wants to scout AMX-10s and then blow them up with the Jaguar rocket. 
Uh, but he's seen the commandos. Yeah, he's seen the commandos. I think he's shooting these down. We'll actually kill him. So, yeah, the, the Jaguar gets the same gun as the French Jaguar. Uh, I think the stats are the same. I mean, in real life, they're the same gun. So, yeah, the commandos go down, but they'll survive. See, so five survive. And sadly, they still land on normal cohesion. They should really be low cohesion, um, which is a shame. And, yeah, so the scimitars here died to that AMX. Oh, actually, one of them, they're both still alive. And there you go, so the tornado gets a hit off on that Jaguar, should be able to sweep around and kill it. Yeah, that turn with the double missiles can be quite deadly. And yeah, these scimitars survived, and so did that AMX, because the Rover Milan Power missed. If that had hit, it would have killed that. And these scouts will die to these commandos anyway, uh, because... One of them landed successfully, and the other guys, you know, they're still still fighting. And that Jaguar rocket had to evac, it seems. So, this scimitar is going to die now. Uh, unless he smokes, and the smoke he does. And AMX 30B2 has been purchased for Helljumper. Not sure what Ramborn's by. Oh, we got Chieftain Mark 9, some rifles. Link's Helam can be useful, but the Minstrel is the best man pad in the game. It's France, so it's got a really high anti-healer range and a quite high anti-aircraft range. 65% accuracy, 5 HE. Crucially though, the Helam has 6 HP, which means that it will survive one hit. So the Vab T20 is an AA gun now. Because uh, apparently that's what it was in real life. So... Yeah, it's a 20mm AA gun now, which they aren't great, but they're good for stunning kilos so that the minstrel can finish the kill. So one of those commandos ended up getting picked off by this fox as he moved around, must have been able to kill the guy in 1 HP. And yeah, over on this side, you know, Helljumper's just got infinite units, France of course, known for how absolutely bonkers broken it is. Bonkers Broken Busted Division. Bonkers Broken Busted Blinde. Something like that. So these chasseurs are 40 points for an 850 meter range rocket launch at 8 strength. And they come with a 35 point IFV. That's amphibious and everything. So this is a really, really powerful combo. And it's dead cheap. Um, pretty OP, but what can you do? So you can buy lots of these a minute, and then that allows you to get front lines that look like this, where you can saturate the front line really fast, because all your units are just so cheap. Over here, a supply was brought up and got hit by the fox. This B2 would be able to kill that fox pretty easily, though, so I guess once that recon gets there... Yeah, so he's noticed that the supply died there, so he's repathed that. And then, yeah, this is the combo from the other side. So the gun group is 25 points for four men. Obviously no rocket launcher. And the Warrior Milan's 40 points. Uh, the Warrior Milan, a little bit better than the AMX 10P. Costs more, but you can get a standard Warrior for 35, which is a little bit better than the AMX P. It's just that the, the unit inside this is far too cheap for its price. Not sure why the price went down on that. So, Minstrel misses this, uh, but here you'll see that this should... Well, let's see what happens. Okay, so it doesn't stun it. The thing is, so once you get... Ah, so the one over here did get hit by the Minstrel, and then the Vab must have finished it off. But once you get stunned, you start... You rise up and start spinning again, and then you're dead, because the Minstrel will get a second shot off on you. It can be quite frustrating. So, Chief to Mark 9 here brought up to fight the AMX 30B2. This has 11 front armor, 135.72 kilometers an hour speed, 16 pen on a 105 millimeter gun, and uh, an auto cannon. So, yeah, it's a very OP tank for its price. And this ain't bad either. 150 points for 19 pen, but the range is less, you see. Uh. I th yeah, so it's probably going to die now. <laughs> yeah, it gets hit by that Jaguar ATGM. So, 
the UK doesn't get an ATGM plane, but France gets a really amazing one for 195 points. Uh, not sure why it's so cheap. So now his best bet is to like try and rush down that tank and hit it with the auto cannons. But there you go. This thing gets another one on its way out. Broke a piece of shit. But yeah, Rambon's fighter must have been on repair or something because he didn't bring that out until after this thing had fired both of its volleys. And you see that, you know, the warriors are dead now. So this was an ill-fated push. On this side, this is going to be a pretty tough nut to crack. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. So this one's 155. And it's got 18 pen on a 105mm gun, which is, to my knowledge, just insane. Um, maybe people who understand military history could tell me how how the French 105mm gun is so much better than everybody else's in this game. And yeah, for 155 points, it's just far far better than that Mark 9. You don't get as many Renesses though. Uh, 72 speed's the main one. So you see how slow these chieftains are. 45. This is a Mark 11, so it gets the max range on the gun, that's it. 45. Pretty bad. Um, interestingly enough, the Brennus gets mediocre optics and this gets normal optics. Is that because it's a CV tank? Or is that something specific to the Chieftains? Yeah, it's just because it's a CV tank. The standard ones are, uh, are mediocre. So yeah, the Chasseurs clean up that lower 80 pretty fast, which is what you'd expect. Uh, but they are just sat here tanking shots now. Uh, looks like he's moving them. Yeah. And yeah, they both survive. Over on this side, um, Helljump is just suffering from a lack of recon. If he moved this Milan up, he'd be able to see those, and then this would be able to shoot them. But instead, he's just going to spam Chasseurs and AMX 30B2, and that's usually enough when you play at 5 easy. So it's potential for Helljumper to really push in here, but he doesn't know. He probably assumes there's more here. You also get this problem when you start pushing on this side that it's really close to the enemy's reinforcements. So unless you do it really quickly, then you just die. And yeah, this Hell Arm now has to get back. Minstrel hits it, and the T20 should finish it off. It does not. I thought there were two of them in there, but no, it's just two B2s. This is your typical French blob, you see this a lot. So the Chasseurs and the AMX 10P really cheap. AMX 30B2 really cheap. This thing, you do have to pay for it. So I think that's reasonable. Uh, but this is a potent combo as well, I've learned recently. So yeah, rather than push down here, a better idea is to push down here. Because once you get to here, you cut the enemy's reinforcement point, uh, resupply. And then you can really mess them up. But yeah, as it stands, that Paris is going to have to get back. Box switch into the VAB. And it will kill that. Challenger's here now, though, so that stops any hopes of getting through here quickly. And, uh... Yeah, this VBL Milan came down in price as well, so this is very good optics, good stealth for 55 points. And it's got armor on it. So that's pretty powerful. Because um, unlike the the Milan Jeeps, do we have any on the, on the fields? Roberman power, here we go. So this is 45. Doesn't get the optics, and the armor's less than one, that means that small arms could kill it. But they do carry the same armor. And yeah, so because this is where the optics come into their own, right? So he can see him, but he can't see him. And yeah, that's a very cheap Jaguar ATGM. We'll take out that tank there. British AA not very good. <laughs> what can be done? Rambon really needs some re infantry recon here. Like, he's got the scimitar, but that's not sufficient. Over here, something is happening. Um... These guys forced to smoke, but not fast enough. So he takes a hit from a Milan 2, but crucially, 11 front armor means you survive a Milan 2 hit. You'll not survive a Toe 2 hit, but you'll survive a Milan 2 hit. I believe this Dragon Paris can see that challenger. I might be wrong. Oh, it's close. He might not. But yeah, these gun groups won't survive these 
Sure, so, so the thing with gun group is that it's got two MGs, but small arms don't really do anything <laughs> in, in this patch, so, and for the last few patches. So it doesn't really matter. Um, and that changes the balance of the game a lot. So something like Mott Shots should be a lot stronger than they are because they got two MGs. And in fact, something like Rifles uh, and, and the gun group. So Rifles get two LSWs as well, but it doesn't really matter. So yeah, you could see that Challenger. This misses, though. 30 pen. I'm not sure if that would one-shot it. It might do. I'm not sure what killed that. Must have been this Chieftain, I suppose. But yeah, this Hot 2, uh, really not the sort of thing you want to be tanking. And the speed of the British tanks really showcased here. Like he... Oh, I mean, I, that missed, but... Yeah. So you see, it's, it's once you commit to something, you can't get out of it. Whereas these are really fast. Once you commit to something, you can just zoom away. It's another advantage. So yeah, quite a static game, but uh, How Jumper enjoys a pretty large numerical superiority here. There's lots, lots of guys here, lots of guys here, uh, and don't get me wrong, there's quite a few things here, but I think uh, How Jumper's trades in a lot better. Which, uh, yeah, doesn't really surprise me when you're playing 5e. So the Tornado... Tornado... The Tomatoes up here. And, crucially, if you just leave something at the back of the map, uh, it would just randomly decide to fly across the map and die. So you have to queue a bunch of move orders back here, uh, if you want it to loiter. Sadly, they don't actually stay in the air that long. Um, but the idea behind the loitering is that, so because the tractor rapier doesn't have radar, it's... Uh... Yeah, so this guy's got to get back now, because... He takes too many hits, he loses his cohesion. Because the first UK doesn't have any radar AA. You can't actually see planes coming until they're right on top of you. So you're supposed to use a fighter and loiter it. But it's very difficult to do that. And the fighters, the air vision on them is a bit better, but it's not it's not that good. So it looks like he can see that Milan too. And the power of the bong AA. So that was... Did the tornado get a look in there? Yeah, that was a Tornado, three Javelin LMLs, and a Tractor Apier, and he almost made it. It was the last shot from this, so... Just first UK problems. We'd love to see a Mortar from from Ranbon. Like, he knows there's a lot here. Well, actually, does he? He knows there's something here. He knows there's something here. So it can be useful to buy a Mortar and just start hitting it. Alright, here we go. So we get Mortars out from Helljumper. He's bringing them over here. Uh, yeah, interesting attack strategy. So I guess, yeah, he wants to take this. Um, and yeah, the Challenger's just got this problem that, you know, it reloads really slowly for start. So that's 8 fire rate, that's 9. Um, and then as soon as you take a couple hits, your reload speed goes down. <laughs> so it, you end up shooting like a shot every 10 seconds. And... Pen on this is, is 19, but that, that's the same as Chieftain. So, these things, that their advantage is their armor. And that can be good in a in certain situations, but not others, basically. So, ATGM Jaguar coming over here, but the smoke deploys the wrong way. Thing is, is he can't see that, so he's going to fly over three javelins and a tractor apier again. And they do kill him. So, crucially, the Tractor Apia deals 6 HE and the Javelin deals 4 HE. So you can survive two Javelin hits, but you cannot survive a Javelin hit and a Tractor Apia hit. And you could also not survive two Tractor Apia hits. So yeah, how jumper has got to stop feeding his air into here now. He should know that there's, uh, there's just too much here. After he lost that bomber, he should have seen the trails, but specifically now that he's lost that ATGM. Should know about it. And yeah, so he's he's trying to advance across here. So he needs some infantry and, and here it comes basically. See yeah, I mean uh, don't get me wrong, it's a good tank, uh, particularly now that it's not three hundred points. 
but it just takes so long to do anything. Um, just with the, the rate of fire, the pen is not great for a, for a 275 point tank, you'd expect a bit better. And so you just sit there and donk it, and then the enemy just smokes. Unless, I mean, he wasn't paying attention here. I'll jump obviously and join massive unit inferiority, so... Yeah, an interesting point about this zone is that it was made a lot bigger recently, and so I would say that red gets the worst side of the map now. It used to be the other way around. Red used to have the better side of the map. Ah, that was going for the para. And the javelin Lamau here died to this. Dragon Paris just sniping him. Bruin gets the sniper too, the SAS patrol. Also gets these guys. Uh, but without recon. So yeah, this guy can probably see that tank. And that. Probably not that. Probably not that. Just because they get stealth bonus. And yeah, these are the sniper teams that bring us. So there goes his eyes. And now, what's he going to do about this? Probably can't even see it, even though he's right on top of it. What was I saying? Oh yeah, the map. So it used to be that red start, forward deployed start would be like here, so you just drive straight into the town. But that was moved back, so it's about here now. And then this zone was made bigger, and that gives reds a lot of problems. So if you lose this, and this, or just this, well, to be honest, if you lose this, you're going to lose this. Uh, basically, the enemy can just buy some mortars, throw some smoke here, and then you can actually put either put a CV in this house, or you can actually put a CV behind this house, and it won't be spotted by the people in the town. Uh, alternatively, you can get a smoke and just smoke here, and then drive into this tree line. And the enemy is forced to cross this massive open ground to get to you. So yeah, I'd say red side is the worst side now. It certainly used to be the other way around. And you see that, because of this sniper's position, I don't actually think they can see those that Milan 2. Um, but it only deals 3 damage because of the 20 front armor of the challenger. Um, yeah, so if you let 1st UK build up for a long time, there's going to be a lot of tanks in this small area. And so, Helljumper, he did have a huge advantage in forces, but now it's just more tanks coming in, more tanks coming in, more tanks coming in. And so it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult for him to do anything. Just because of the sheer quantity of tanks. But yes, he has managed to take this. And he's got this over here. Like, he still enjoys a commanding position. That AMX went down to these chieftains. At these, so at max range, it would survive a hit, I think. But at low range is not so much. And then yay, it's 55 points for two Appalaces. You can compare them to Panzer Jaeger. Um, and yeah, for some reason he only gets one off on that guy. Suffers an ammo explosion. But he's still got all his ammo. So I'm not sure how that works. So how is the purchase to kill those mortars? And he killed one. So there were two here before, now there's one. So he just buys another one. But that's how you counter the smoke spam meta. You either get 120 millimeters and you you bomb the enemy smoke blob so that you can slowly kill his CV, depending on what it is. If it's a tank, it's not going to kill it very fast, but if it's a little car, it'll do so. And you, you buy a howitzer and you shoot the mortars. Um... But yeah, it's a big investment, 240 points, and meanwhile your enemy will be ticking up, and these cost 45, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to to do it, you know, particularly in the moment. So this guy's not been unloaded. Rambone clearly hasn't seen my How to Deploy Units video. And this guy dies as well. So you see the power of the VBL Milan, because it brings its own recon. It's actually really, really, really strong for that price. And yeah, when you're playing first UK, you got to be really on top of your tanks, just because they they're just because they're so slow. It's very very unforgiving. So you got to be really on top of them. You need lots of supply. He's got lots of supply. 
but yeah, if you forget about something like this, you know. Also, you'll note that the smoke isn't as good as it used to be. <laughs> the smoke on tanks, because it pops a little bit further away now. It doesn't cover your sides anymore, because it used to cut, just pop right in front of you, and it would cover you basically from the front 180 degrees almost. It doesn't really happen now. So, yeah, this is a really riveting game, but, um, you know, what can you do? So, rifles get an 80, uh, I mean, 850 meter range rocket launcher as well, but crucially, this has 20, and this has 21, which means that when you're fighting against, uh, this guy's probably going to die now. That's a miss. Uh, when you're fighting against Leopard 1s, the, the Apalas will one-shot a Leopard 1, whereas the Lore 80 won't. Uh, Frankly, I think neither of them should be one-shotting a Leopard 1. Um, as opposed to the Lore 80 being too weak, I think the Apalas is too strong. So here we go, smoke thrown down, and now he's just going to drive it. Could have done with waiting for his infantry. Um, but yeah, he enjoys a large tank numerical superiority, but not actually that much. And the smoke hasn't covered these guys, so they're going to start dying now. Should have deployed them here and then ran them through the smoke, like... Presumably that's why he bought them. So that he could kill the tanks in, in you know, by smoking and getting up to it. So Ranborn enjoys a hull breach there, which causes him to lose an extra HP over what he usually would, and that kills him, and leaves this Brennus alive. That's another problem you get with heavy tanks, you just... because every unit can receive crits. If you have less units, then if one of them gets critted, it's a bigger problem for you. So that challenger lost that fight just purely on a skill issue basis. He should have played the game better. I'm not sure why he chose to have that crit. But the Brenner's look runs out now, and uh, these chasseurs have deployed, and Ramborn's got no sappers or anything. So he's forced with his very slow tanks to try and clear out these AMXs, and you know it, it works, but. But once you, when you're in the smoke, it, it's very, very difficult because the anti-char will kill you. And you can't reverse. Like you're just very slow. You're very slow. So, love to see these rifles move up a bit. Obviously, easier said than done. And these chasseurs walking across here was a bit counterproductive. I'm not sure if they had tanks with them, but they're dead now. This has, uh, they've got supply next to them, so I don't know if it's fired. So he's decided to move out of the smoke, which I'm not sure is such a good idea. The Jaguar HE gets the Challenger, and even though there's a tractor AP here, I guess because the building blocked it a little bit, and the Javelins didn't get any hits, this guy's moving now, so he won't be able to shoot. Um... I mean, it's a chieftain, it's probably not worth it, but he gets out anyway. And here we go, infinite manpower from the French army. Uh, just spamming in the chasseurs now, really just too cheap. I don't understand why these are 40 points. I know I say this every game I see 5e. Uh, it gets an 850 meter range rocket launcher, why is it 40 points? But yeah, here comes the tank and it's sat in the smoke and now you need... You need to throw loads of infantry in there, but you can't do that. By the time your infantry arrives, it's, uh, it's too late. Oh, I see. So he bought he he bought two howitzers, which so for for one less howitzer, he could have like three infantry in this little smoke block. Um, and yeah, you see that the assets can basically shoot all the way down that, but they're all getting stunned up. Um, yeah, so. Three chasseurs a minute, I believe, is 260 points. And same with these, that's 55 plus 25, which makes it 70. No, hang on, 80, right? <laughs> so the Gazelle rockets are being sent on a suicide mission just to see where the tank is. And the Mirage flies over all the javelins and the rapier, and we'll get out. Because it's got 1,458 meters. Kilometers now speed and comes at three availability per card. 
But then by spotting it, now we can buy the Jaguar bombers. The British ones, of course, being more expensive than the French ones, despite being the same. Uh, although it does have more ECM. Um, and and the, there goes the CV, right? So he's managed, Rambo's has managed to stabilize this, but with 40 minutes left, unless he gets a tick somehow, uh, he's going to lose. And these poets says he didn't manage, it's very difficult because the, the counter battery doesn't automatically spot these mortars. It just doesn't shoot them. Uh, at least I've had that problem a lot. I don't know if it's supposed to. So you got to watch the, sh the, the rounds take off. And it can be quite difficult to do so, particularly when you <laughs> when you're doing this. It can be quite difficult to do so. Here we go. So he gets ten percent less ECM, and he costs fifty less points. So that's fair. These tornadoes have to be oh they're the bingo fuel anyway, so he can't really stop this. Uh, but that's going to drop on nothing. What's the payload? 400 times 4. When the British one comes over, I'd like to see the payload. Maybe the British payload's bigger. And that's why it's 50 points more expensive. And, yeah, you see... Well, I was going to show you the difference in fire rates between these two people, but... So, yeah, it was a cool attack from Helljumper, and now he secured the point seat that he needed to win, right? So now you can just sit around. Um, yeah, it's an uh, interesting situation. So there's 70. If you got 280 points, you can buy four of them. And some commandos are going to drop in here. This javelin's out of ammo, this one's out of position. You need it in the church, really. Uh, the sniper's not in the church. It needs to be in the church. Javelin LML needs to be in the church. Rifles probably don't need to be in the church. So yeah, without... Well, he's got, he's got his ammo now, but it's too late, because they've already dropped, and the commandos will kill this basically immediately. But left unsupported, the assault pioneers. Yep, here we go. The assault pioneers will clean this up. So these guys are advancing without recon, so this guy's going to die now. Yep, and this guy's going to die as well. Oh, nice smokes. Need recon, really. And these commandos, they might kill a javelin or something, but these assault pioneers, once they get up to here, they should be able to start using their satchels. Uh, but sadly, they are not getting up to there. And now they're going to get blown up by this Jaguar. Alright, so one of them survives on 1 HP. Um, yeah, a few, few units out of position here for Ambon. Um... I guess he's recognised that he can't use the Hell Arms because of that Minstrel. So the Hell Arms would have to be back here. He doesn't know exactly where the Minstrel is. He's using a CV tank, which is pretty cool. And you see that 5e just doesn't really run out of infantry uh, or tanks. Or anything, really. But uh, Rambon's got his own mortars now. Uh, these sadly are 81mm, so they don't actually do anything. They're good for smoke, but HE-wise they don't really do anything. And there goes that Hell Arm that we were talking about. So there were two here. I guess they both died. And now there's a lot of a lot of primitive volts gears in here. Ah, here we go. So okay, so the the bomb is a hundred kilos bigger. And yeah, crucially, Helljumper not buying any rolls. I don't know if he actually brings them. And this deck. Next will be in the description if you want to see him. And yeah, you see, you know, they keep getting out. You need you need a lot of AAs, the UK, to kill these planes, and you won't intercept them. You can only revenge kill them. So, yeah, I mean, good show from Rambon, but what can you do? You're playing against the most OP division in the game. And, you know, you, you do what you can, but playing against somebody that's got 900 games is the most OP division in the game. So, yeah, good show. Um, but this is looking very over. You just need another CV in here now. Uh, nine minutes left. Presumably, you'll play it to the end.
So yeah, I, I definitely for for 113 kilos less bomb and 20% ECM. Yeah, I'd love a 210 point bomber. Um, sign me up, because look, it still kills things. I mean, what, what do you need it for? So there you go. That was um, yeah, the tornadoes. Did they help out this one? No, this one I saw. Okay, so the track rape. Oh, I guess this guy managed to get shot. So yeah, because this guy's not in the church, he can't really see anything. He's blocked by the buildings in front of him. The LOS in this game is actually real. As in, if I'm here, and that house is in my way, then yes, that house will be in my way, and I won't be able to see the helicopter behind that house. A lot of people complain about it, because they don't understand it. And here we go, so... Rambon... He's realized that, well, even if I hold this, I don't have any... You know, I'm just going to lose because my opponent has 132 more points than me. So he's going for some sort of Hail Mary down here, but these guys can fight 850 meters. And so can these guys, and so these guys are all going to die. Um, he manages to dismount, it seems. Yeah, uh, every rocket launcher in France fires 850 meters, which is the maximum range. I'm really not sure why the LRAC does. I mean, this thing is like from the 60s or something, but max range gun. Not sure. Not sure at all. Same with these AMX 30Bs. Like, why? Why do they fire two two seven five hundred five millimeter gun when a Mark 9 with 120 millimeter gun only shoots 2,100? What? What's the logic behind that? So yeah, this guy shoots that guy across uh, a few football fields with his 850 meter range rocket launcher. The Rambo's got another CV over here. And crucially, these commandos are probably going to run past these guys now and get blown up. Uh, yeah, they're getting blown up. These guys aren't. That's Rambo's not paying enough attention. He could, well, well now this hell jump is <laughs> decide to jump in bed next to them. Um, <laughs> he's seen it now. And on this side, um, yeah, smoke coming out. The the 81mm is good for smoke. Because uh, I believe it's got a slightly higher fire rate. Not much higher, but a little bit. And the smoke blobs are smaller, but so it fires faster. So good. And there we go, smoke for that. So you could just drive the CV into there. But crucially, he has not done that. He has put it here. And the, you got him a land two here, so you'd assume... And with a supply, so it's got infinite rounds. These guys have both missed this with like four rounds. Finally gets a hit. Sees the bomber. Uh, sees the sees the CV. Hits it with a bomber. Two bombers, in fact, because all the AA moved forwards and died. It's just a couple of minstrels actually. And now Rambon's going for here with his Mark Nines. A bit beat up, but they're still there. And the minstrel uh, not in a great place. So yeah, 155 points, 13 front armor, 18 pen on a 105mm gun, max range, 72 kilometers out of speed. Whereas these are 5 points less, they get they get uh, 2 more armor. What, you, you would think 1 more pen, but they don't. Because the range is less, the pen's actually the same. Because you gain pen for every... Uh... Okay. You gain 1 pen for every 175 meters closer you get to your opponent. So, if if my gun shoots 175 meters, that was really stupid. He drove that with his side armor showing past the scimitar, and then the scimitar hit him in the side with the pen on the auto cannon, which goes up for every 175 meters. So it's a lot more than two at that range, and on that side armor, it'll kill it. So Rambard's managed to secure this. Um, these guys ended up killing that one AMX 30B somehow. Somehow they managed it. And now he's in here, so now he's on a plus two. So Helljumper's got a difficult choice to make now. By the time these guys get here, he'll be behind. But he still needs to push him out. And he overextended pretty badly here. Like, he didn't have to push into the middle of the town. He could have just sat here. Uh, but Rambo, and using his mortars, uh, his howitzers quite well. Like, you see, there's, there's really not a whole lot left here. Uh, it's a pretty beautiful game, actually, when you think about it. Like, you can see where the fighting has been. Reminds me of Planetary Annihilation. Except people actually play this game. Nobody played it. People say Warner's dead. Man. 
Triplanetary Annihilation. That's a dead game. So, more and more smoke, but when you're that far away, the dispersion cloud is pretty big, so I suggest driving closer. Although that can actually be advantageous, because it's, uh... Will they kill that? Probably not. Because it, it now he doesn't know exactly where it is, so he can bomb it. But most of Helljumper's bombers died, was sort of sacrificed for this town. And here we go, he's smoking again, so we can send the CV in. Like I said, this is how it's done. And, you know, sadly, Rambons, these haven't really moved. Um, so, would have been great if he'd managed to kill those, but... Just paying attention to other things. If you buy artillery, you want it firing all the time. If you can't hack it, just uh, press the fire at will button and leave it to it. It's better than it not shooting, basically. And these chieftains, crucially, they have to close the distance, because these guys fire max range. But these are regular bees, so it's a heat gun. And that means that the pen doesn't actually get better with range. Um, and yeah, that guy tanks a side shot there and makes it. Wagner, that's very topical. Um, and so yeah, you'll get in. But without infantry support, he's not going to have a great time. This guy can't see anything. And then he misses his missile. And then he gets hit twice by the javelin and survives. So that's what we were saying, 4, H 4 HE against 10 HP. And here we see another tool that the French get that the British don't get, is the flamethrowers. So this is the best anti-infantry in the game, is a, is a flamethrower. Uh, but you have to stop to shoot. And yeah, Britain doesn't get that. They do get the satchels. So he's trying to get through here, but you got a 50 metre minimum range. Yeah, so now they're in minimum range, so he can't shoot. So you actually have to reverse. But guess what the smoke vision is? It's 50 metres. So... As soon as you drive up to them, your guy, in the time it takes to accelerate... He got those flamethrowers. In the time that it takes him to decelerate, um, he crosses the 50 meter threshold and then he can't shoot. So it's pretty stupid. It's a pretty big problem with the game that you can only see 50 meters in smoke. But what an interesting change from the, the shock changes were is that satchels actually damage tanks now. <laughs> So these satchels between them actually do manage to, to kill that 1 HP tank. Either that or the Hoitzer's got it. So Ramborn probably... I mean, you probably can't see it because he's not going to recon here, but oh, this is an imposition. He's got a pretty good idea of where this is. <laughs> <laughs> so all he has to do is drive forwards. And there you go. They get that. So another CV purchase for Helljumper. Uh, but I think with 1 minute 30 remaining, it's too late. I think it's too late. And, yeah, GG. I mean, what what would I have liked to have seen from both sides? Uh, Rambon really should have killed these mortars. He got one of them, and then he bought another one. Like, he really should have killed these. He had he bought the Hobbitsers. Uh, buying the Hobbits is the hard part. And then, yeah, because you, 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 you see them come in, and then you're like, oh, what was it? So you go over here, and by then, they've usually stopped shooting. But <laughs> if you're patient, you can find out. Um, but yeah, great play from uh, from Rambon. Uh, obviously, if somebody's playing 5B, I cannot congratulate them. Uh, it's sort of like going to a primary school and beating up the little kids. You know, do you want a do you want a well done? I mean, are you playing the most broken deck. Uh, but yeah, GG from uh, to both players. Uh, Hell jumper press the AMX thirty B two spawn button and the Chasseur spawn button really effectively. Uh, Rambon actually was forced to play the game of Wano. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think maybe it came down to an issue of veterancy. Like he just ran out of AMX thirty B twos because he was bringing them at two vet. And um, yeah, Rambon didn't seem to run out of tanks. Although you know he's, he's I think he ran out of Mark nines. So yeah, this guy's coming down here now. But even if he gets in here, it's a plus two. Um, but yeah, Helljumper never want to give up. Probably can't understand why he lost when he when he pressed 5e and then clicked the search button. Probably doesn't understand how, how it came to be that he could lose. But there you go. Um, so, Ranbon, 2 to 1 KD, and it was still really, really, really close. But that's what playing against 5e is like. And uh, <laughs> uh, that's my profile. So it shows my profile. Um, I was cheesing, so I changed my name to something else. But no, Ranbon is not ranked 26, that's me. 
the high jump is rank 6 and he's got 934 games as 5e. Uh, and one where he played packed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, GG. I mean, uh, pretty interesting game. Pretty interesting game. Uh, just just play twice or three times as well as your opponent, and then you can beat him if he's on 5e. That's all there is to it, really. So I hope that gives you some ideas. Uh, as always, just like in life, in Warno, there is the easy way and there is the hard way. You can pick 5e, fall asleep and win, or you can play first armoured, consume some amphetamines, get a 2-1 to KD and barely win. <laughs>